You got it locked on Rhodium Radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in the motherfucking house. So right about now. And I say, yo Steve, are you with me? I-C-E, are you with me? Here's a little something by the nigga like me They never should've let me buy tape from Steve Ice Cube would like to play hey, Don't shit mixed by Dr. Dre hey, Since I was a youth, I like Compton Now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape for two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game and I'm in it. Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute with a right, left, right, making you sick. And then you see Tony A is on the mix. Tony A. Tony A. When you're ready, go. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 323, if I'm correct. What is it, Bro, I'm, I'm alive. 323, once again, Rodian Radio. Before I introduce my very special guest, uh, once again, I just got back from doing an interview with DJ Yella and CC the Mamacita on K-Day, which will be released tomorrow, so be looking out for that. I'll put the info on my Instagram, so make sure you guys tune in for that. Once again, we were at K-Day earlier today, me, DJ Yella, promoting Club Rodium. Club Rodium will be going live uh, downtown L.A., November 17th. You don't want to miss it. We got DJ Yella right now coming up, and we got um, uh, DJ Battle Cat, uh, and more others are going to be announced. So make sure you guys get your tickets. Link is in my bio or at Concerts for You or Rodium Club on Instagram. Definitely, definitely get your tickets. Like I said, we're already halfway sold out. You don't want to miss this event. So other than that, I want to thank everybody who liked, commented, subscribed, everybody who shared, everybody who, you know, is a part of this show tonight. Thank you, everyone, for making this possible because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce my very special guest. One thing we have in common, uh, we're both Cowboy fans. So um, once again, Kilo, thank you for coming down, my brother. Yes, sir. On my head. You know what, man? Did you watch the Cowboys game Sunday? Man, home on Sunday. Uh, versus the Eagles. I think I watched a little piece, but no. Okay, okay. So you don't watch it pretty much every game? Or whenever you get a chance? Whenever I get a chance. And and I don't got much time to be around the TV, <laughs> loco. All right, that'll work. I make time because... You know, that's like, that's like my kind of like peaceful time whenever I watch a game. I love football. I watch college and I watch pro. But anyways, uh, uh, other than that, uh, let's go back to like Friday, bro. How was your weekend? My weekend was dope, bro. I shot a video. Okay. The Lean Like a Cholo remix. It's okay. It's called the Lean Like a Cholo 360. No shit. So we did the record and we, we shot the video and it was dope. Okay, we'll get into that more towards the end because I want to ask you a little bit about that video because I had heard about it. a couple of people told me that you had did like a remix to that song and I want to ask you kind of like why, but we'll get to that. Tomorrow. Other than that, my bro, where originally are you from? Like where is Kilo, where was he born and raised? Kilo from Oxnard, California, homeboy. Uh-huh. And that's where I was raised. And I mean, that's where my motherfucking roots are at. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys never moved around. Pretty much, you were just born and raised right there in Oxnard. We moved around, homeboy. My my family, mis jefitos, the 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 the, the son, trabajan en el fin, loco. You know what I mean? Yeah. Piscando fresa y madre mía, and, and uh, I was actually born in Modesto, homeboy. Okay. Only because I got caught over the I got caught up over the um, tomato season. So cuando se iban de aquí, que la fresa se acababa en Oxnard, they would take off over there to go work on the tomatoes and Mary Media. So my jefita had me there. So okay, I was born there, but I'm not from there. 
Ok, ¿y tu familia es de México? Mi familia es de Michoacán, México, loco. Ok, that's good. Now, you come from a big family, like, are you the only boy? The only, uh, you got brothers and sisters? I got brothers and sisters, and I got a bunch of, yes, from a real big family, everybody that know me. Everybody in my hood is basically my cousins, you know what I'm saying? Right, and right. Uncles and everything like that, but, you know. I think I probably go to Oxnard maybe once a year because I go when the, the, the Dallas Cowboys go to the training camp. Yeah, they, yeah, Cowboys, they, they over there all the time. Yeah, I like that, man. I, I like going over there. I, I don't remember the name of the place, but I went to a place and I had some really good uh, mariscos. So I, I don't remember the name of the place. So I don't know if you recommend anything in Oxnard. I recommend, you want some pan dulce? I know you. I know, I know you're in that business. So it is a pile of mariscos. You know what? There's a lot of bad places out there, and realistically, man, fuck. No sé qué decirte loco. Okay, now let me ask you this: Growing up in a Mexican home, bro, what was it like? Paint us a picture. What type of music would your mother or your father play? What was it like growing up? Growing up, Mexican music was. Ya sabes, todo lo que es lo mexicano, like, where, where was I growing up to? Okay, I'm going to tell you the ones that I remember and the ones I know, como Los Rookies, Vicente Fernández, Los Tigres del Norte, y luego llegan Los, los Tucanes, y, 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 man, Oxnard got some talent. You ever heard of Industria del Amor? Mm -hmm. They came on the projects where I was raised. Really? <clears throat> in La Colonia, the Grupo Brindis. Fuck, bro, we got some talent out there, huh, bro? bro. Yeah, man, the, 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 the stuff you grew up to, loco, same thing. Right. Okay, okay, well, you know, I, I want you to tell your story. You know? <laughs> my story They're yours. tired of hearing my ass, <laughs> so, that, but uh, eso te pregunto, you know. But, okay, now, now, growing up, did you play any sports? I played, I remember, you know that. Boxing, we take it over out there, yeah. home boy. Yeah, yeah. And we got champions out there, like my boy Fernando Vargas. Then yeah. now he's got the Vargas dynasty. Yeah. Uh, Victor Ortiz, that's not from Oxnard, but he came to Oxnard to train with my tío, Eduardo Garcia. Robert Garcia, world champion, that's my cousin. Robert Garcia is your cousin? Yes. I, 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 I'm a big boxing fan, so I'm going to quiz you on some boxing. So. Don't quiz me on everything. <laughs> Not the new cats, I say. No, no, the old stuff, because I'm an 80s and 90s guy. And if I do, I'll answer with what I know. Okay, okay. Robert Garcia, one thing I will say, he's doing a great job training right now. You yes. Know, a great job training. I was a fan of his. I saw him fight a lot. Uh, like, of course, for me, well, let me ask you this. Greatest Mexican fighter ever, who is it? I say Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez, right? Yeah. Now, would you ever... Put Canelo up there at all? I give Canelo props to the fullest, but I still think Chavez is the dude. Absolutely. I, th I think that too. Uh, I'm a huge, huge boxing fan. Greatest heavyweight of all time, who would you say? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Fan of Mike Tyson. Big time fan of Mike Tyson as well. Now, um, pero Fernando Vargas, now let's talk a little bit about boxing. You saw that fight contra Trinidad. I saw I was there. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this, and I talked to Popeye Ray, who I interviewed. He's, a, he's the active referee still. So I brought in a referee. We had a conversation about boxing. I told him this, and I still stand by this. Vargas was still one year away from fighting Trinidad. He should have waited. But he said this. Sometimes these offers don't come around a second time. They offered him Can the I fight. Can I stop you right there? Yes, please. And tell you what my deal told me. A ver, dime. We were, we were at, a, at a, a kid's birthday party, right? It was, uh, we were all there, Fernando, all of us were there at this kid's birthday party, which his old manager, that rest in peace now, is gone. And we we're there, and I asked him, why do you take these fights? And he just told me what you said. I said, he said, you know what? We take these fights. ¿Quién quieres que le pongan la madre? A nobody? Oh, turn it up. You know what that means? That let's take that fucking fight. Yeah. Do you understand this? House, they took it. And he's like, we're going to go get it. Because he's so young and everybody throws this young. Like, why do you throw him up there? He's like, 
What happens if they throw him against nobody, loco? Y ese güey gets lucky, le da un madrazo. Yeah, you're right. So that's what they said. I, I know it's a gamble. Money. I just thought that it was too soon, you know. I thought if he would have waited another year, I thought he would have beat Trinidad, and I thought eventually he would have beat Esa de la Hoya también, you know. I saw everything. I was there, homeboy. I yeah. opened up for Fernando Vargas in Atlantic City at the Taj Mahal. Okay. When he got his first belt, the youngest what was it? Well, uh, 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 cuando le le partió la madre a Yori Boy Campas. Oh fuck! Yori I Boy was Campos. there, perrito, and I performed there in Atlantic City, homeboy. Yeah. And he took it, so I saw the beginning, and he wrapped the colonia on his shorts. And that's right. where the gym was at in my neighborhood, La Colonia right. neighborhood. Yeah. And I think that, man, he's still, man, he created history, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. Lo que pasó, pasó, si me entiendes? Sí. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, he's still one of the greats out there. I just thought he took some of the fights a little bit too early, but you know what? Hey, that's business. That's fucking business. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now, uh, um, growing up, we, we said sports. So you, you boxed? I boxed since I was a little boy. All my cousins were there, homeboy. Okay. I just um, yes. No, no football, no baseball, no soccer. Ah, no. soccer, baseball, y todo. Pues en, lo jugamos, pero que digas que... No, <laughs> but, not that serious. I played it, but no, I, I was... Uh, any musical instruments growing up? Zero. Zero? Okay, okay. Now, let me ask you this. Because everybody knows my story, so I'm going to say it because it's always a different guest, and they don't know my story, so I'm going to share this. I was in sixth grade the first time that I was introduced to hip-hop, and it was Rapper's Delight. Do you remember how you were first introduced to hip-hop, and what was that song, if you can recall? I was introduced to hip-hop. It was Run DMC on point. Run DMC. All my Adidas, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, homeboy. it's like that, hard times. The, hard, the whole, <clears throat> man, I go back to MC Shy D, long on. MC Shy D, yeah. And Heavy D. And Heavy D, rest in peace, boys, Heavy D. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, there was nobody else to listen to. It's all, it was all East Coast rap. It, and I didn't even know what East Coast and West Coast was. I just knew hip-hop. Right, right. Now, at what point in time would you say that you started dabbling and started writing lyrics down? Some people say they started with poetry. Some people say I would just copy their lyrics, write them down and rap it myself. How did it happen for you to end up here? I didn't write lyrics. I used to, I used to rap their lyrics. Right. Okay. No changing them, no nothing. I was just... Rapping their lyrics and doing what I did and going to talent talent shows in my school, mm -hmm. and I never wrote lyrics. I just rapped theirs till okay. I started going up later. Okay. And man, so no, I hip hop to me, to me was just like trying to be them or wanting to be like them or whatever. I, I fell in love with that homeboy. And I liked it till NWA and then came through. And then I realized, like, all right, now we got some mass, not essays, like some West Coast, the essays that was the closest to us to, like, fuck the police and all that shit. I said, oh, fuck, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know. And when you came out with the high C and DJ Quick and all that, homeboy, then I said, all right, I like <laughs> you, you know, one thing that, that, I'm very proud of and I'm very thankful that when I started touring early on, when I did shows in front of Raza, one thing that really blessed me was when I would be up on stage, they would tell us, hey, you got 15 minutes before you guys go up on stage. I had to go through my 1200s, set them up, get my new mark mixer, start plugging everything in. And everybody that was in front, it was always the women, hey, hey. And I was like, what's up? Are you Chicano? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all right. And I started realizing that it was our people that wanted more of us up on stage, you know? Because the only time that I ever saw Raza performing up on stage, if it wasn't Frost, if it wasn't Lighter Shader Brown, if it wasn't Spanish Fly, 
or if it wasn't maybe me just being the producer and the DJ, they didn't see too much until, you know, later on when we hit the 2000s. But early on, there wasn't too many, you know. Now we had uh, uh, Latino producers like Tony G, a lot of producers yeah, and DJs like, song, boy. yeah, and Julio G, etc. So there was a lot too, of, yeah, so a lot too. of us out there, but it wasn't sprinkles. It wasn't a lot. Now there's a lot of us. So now, uh, so you, you grew up East Coast because you named a lot of them. Uh, you said when NWA came out, obviously, and then the Chronic came out. Then from there, everybody. The Chronic was way later than Run DMC, homeboy. Right, right, because we're talking about at least 83 to 45, Run DMC, the Fat Boys, uh, este, uh, como se llama, Salt and Peppers, mm-hmm. Schooly D, etc. Eric et B and Rockin. Eric B and Rockin. That, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, I, that's what I listened to. Okay, now let me ask you this. Um, if you can, top five, either groups or rappers from the East Coast, your favorite top five. Oh, bro. Old Dirty Bastard. Okay, that's one. Um, the homie, uh, 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 Big Punk. Two. Um, if I go, you mean the new ones or the old? No, it, does, it doesn't matter for what era. It doesn't matter. Just give me your top. Run your top DMC. Line. Okay, that's three. Yeah, give me two more. LL Cool J. Definitely. Yes. That's definitely one. That's definitely that's that's four. four. And then one more from over there. That I would... And it could be group or an individual. Individual, I say. I say, like, fuck, bro, there's so many. I say that I used to bump. I like the Fat Boys. Fat Boys are dope, bro. Fat Boys are dope. Yes, I'm on those two of them. You know, I believe it was Prince Marky D, Buffy. And one of them was Latino. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, Puerto Rico, that was Prince Marky D. He just recently passed away, I believe. The only one that's still alive is Cool Rock Ski. That cool wasn't the Ski. beatbox about though, right? No, no, that's Buffy, the beatbox guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy was dope. Okay, so now, top five, either artist or group from the West Coast. Ice Cube. Ice Cube, definitely. Snoop. Is that your phone over there, bro? Okay. Snoop and um, um, fuck quick. Okay, that's three. Um, God damn it. <laughs> that's three. Give me two more. From the, from the West Coast. Could, remember, the West Coast, I mean, it's the Bay I Area. I like Dub C, too, homeboy. Dub C's dope. Dove C and God damn. An easy E home bar. Of course. Oh, that's my home. It's right there. Of course. Of course. If I put them all on one record with me, home for I love that shit. Uh, is there such thing as the greatest gangster rap group of all time? I think. I think that if you're asking me. Gangster, as in real gangsters. Uh, uh, so, well, let's keep it. Let's I keep say it NWA. That's okay, the most NWA. gangsters group. Yes, because you know what? There's some music that could be considered gangster rap. Just look at the first Dog Pound album. Some people will say yes. Some people say no. That's G Funk. I consider them both. Okay. Some people would say uh, estos um, uh, uh, CMW. You know, Contest Don't Run and MCA. Yeah. Them, right? Some people even consider Dub C. Remember in the Mad Circle. I remember when he first the came out. Circle. So there's a, there's a bunch of shit that out there that people can consider all gangs. Some people even consider Tupac's All Eyes on Me all gangster shit. Oh, fuck. That's the ultimate. That's not even like gangster. Yeah. That's yeah. above that, homie. That's poetry. Yeah. That's different. What, what do you think it is about Tupac that especially Raza gravitates to? What was it about him that made him special in, in Kilo's eyes? The way he wrote and what he said, which I think that Homeboy had a different swagger that he studied. He studied the game. A gangster group don't study the game. Gangster group comes off the right here, uh-huh. and I think that he was just too much. He was too. ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cuál escuela mucho el niño? Y yo y dicen que no, pero and 
I just think that it wasn't gangster rap what he was saying, bro. Okay. It was above that, homeboy. Okay. He was... He was talking some way out shit, homeboy. All Eyes on Me, double CD. Life After Death, Biggie, double CD. If you had to choose one. <laughs> That's a hard one, but I go with Tupac. Okay, okay. You a fan of Biggie? I'm a fan of Biggie. Yes. Yeah, same here. I'm a fan of Biggie. I'm a big, I think that was one of the dopest. Now, I want you to think about this, bro, because look how ahead of their time just those two individuals were, okay? Tupac passed away, bro, at 25 years old, okay? I got my sons that are older than him. You got Biggie that passed away at 24 years old, bro, over this whole rap thing. And actually, even before social media. Se estaba matando even before social media. So sometimes I think today's even worse, you know. But those people should have still been here, bro. They should have still been here. Yes, but I mean. Así es la vida, ¿verdad? Es la vida, loco. So were some of our homies. They should have been here. Absolutely. And they weren't even rappers. Absolutely. I agree with well, you. You know what I mean? All good, man. So, okay, so now, what happens after high school? What does Kilo do right out of high school? I never got out of high school. I dropped out of high school. Okay, uh, around what grade would you say? 10th, 11th? Probably like 9th, oh boy. Okay, so like 9th. Okay. I used to only go over there and I'd grab my little cinema in the morning and look me la verga. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, it's, it's safe to say that Kilo was not somebody that enjoyed school. Um, enjoyed school. I mean, no me gustaba loco porque. Yeah. Pues, no, no me gustaba. Now, let me ask you this. Do you ever look back at those days, you know, of being in junior high and being in high school and look back and say, I wish I would have finished? Because I dropped out of high school. And, and believe it or not, I still, you know, people still say, well, don't, you can go back. No, no, you can't go back in time. I'm talking about that, that era. You can't go back to that era. Do you ever look back and think to yourself, man, I wish I would have just finished? Fuck. Now, if you ask me that today, I, 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 I wish I would have finished, but do I regret it and do I dwell on it? No. Okay. Okay. That's a fair enough answer. So. You, you, did, you didn't finish school. You got out of school. Walk us through. What is Kilo doing? Kilo over here had a hair back on that lane, lane, show low. And Kilo right now owns a business. Soy panadero, loco. Yes, yes. That's what I heard. I heard it very successful and, at it. Yeah, and I got kids and I'm a father. I'm actually a grandpa now, homeboy. Congratulations. Shout out to Lil Lucky. He's uh, 10 months old and... You know, and what do I do, homeboy? I'm trying to land another head back or so. Okay. Here we are with Tony A., you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you get out of school. Do you get a job immediately? I never had a job in my life. Okay, so you work for yourself. You're independent. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Now, when did the rap thing become real for you? When did you feel, okay, you know, this is... Like, I'm going to take this serious. Would you say immediately out of school, or did it take a while? I come from the era, loco, when hip-hop for Chicanos, it was like, it was like a, a rapper like myself, Little Rob, Night Out, Rest in Peace, um, Mr. Shadow, and all these homeboys that were doing something when Murray Bromfield called La Familia Records, yeah. Spanish Fly came out with 18 with the bullet. And then I met the homie, bro, and I was producing out of my garage, and I was making, hey, perrito, we were making records, right? And I was getting like $10,000, homeboy. And that's when I said, like, this money real. But, you know, we all live with the dream of being not that swap me seller, but that dude that I look up to. I want to be one day like one DMC, right? Right, right. But I never stopped, homeboy. And 
Thank God I landed late like a cholo was in 2007. I was already a little older, homeboy. Yeah, yeah, okay. And Around what year did that take place where you said you started producing? Around what year was that when you started producing, you said? 98. Okay, so 98. Do you remember what equipment you had? Yeah, I remember. I had a reel to reel, and I had a, 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 a well, before, right before that, a four track. Okay, four and track. And then they made the eight track. Yes. Right? On, on tape, some boy. Correct. I had the same thing. Right? And uh, you said the turntable was in the 1200s yeah. and all that. And the ASR 10, homeboy. Yeah. I ripped that thing up. I knew it inside out. But it was always more bounce to the house, the funky one, and then a couple scratches. And, and we were making records, bro. Okay, so now, when you say we, who was, who was we? Is it just you? Did you belong to a group? Walk us through it because... I belonged to a group called Brown Intentions, but it was mainly me. Because everybody was just homies coming to my house. Okay. But it was me doing what I did there. Of course, I had like DJ Rome's, I don't know if you heard of the Loop Pat, uh, 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 Matt Lib. You ever heard of him? I believe so. Right? And Matt Lib now, home by, that's Michael Jackson mm -hmm. in his own world over there. Yeah. And they used to come, and DJ Rome's was cut it up on my Becca. So when I say we, it's like homeboys like that, but every day thing, it was just me, homeboy. Now, the Brown Intentions thing, but did they ever release anything? We released it. That was my first records, 1998. 1998. Selling records at the Swap Me. We're Swap Me legends. So, so now that comes out. What is the response that you're getting from the Brown Intentions group? I was making money, homeboy. Like $10,000 an album, and now we're finished an album in a week. Okay. Because that's all I did. Yeah. So you pressing up cassettes? Cassettes. CDs? Oh, but we're coming from cassettes. Okay. And then it moved to the CDs. Okay. And did, did you know at that time when you guys were creating these records that eventually you may have to perform? Did, did that ever dawn on you? The reason why I asked that question is because it never dawned on me when I was producing my record. Then they said, okay, you got to get some other turntables. Those you keep at home and those you take on the road with you. And I'm thinking... <laughs> What are you talking about? Like, I didn't know we were going to have to end up going on the road. Mm -hmm. Did you know that eventually you were going to have to perform? <laughs> I was already performing better you know, at the house parties <laughs> and stuff like that where, like, sometimes we had it, lo we had it on lock local. Yeah. Like, well, no, we would go to the house parties. The DJs didn't have a microphone. So mm. we used to carry our own microphone so they don't tell us we couldn't perform. But... To go on the road and have to have my equipment to go perform? Nah, I never... That didn't I, happen just yet? I didn't think about it. Okay. Now, as a youngster in the 90s, you're in the rap game, you're selling uh, cassettes, making money, producing, belong to a group, Brown Intentions. Did you ever go to any shows during that time and really get inspired by somebody that you saw perform? You Well, yes. I mean, like... Como quien, like, like, share with me, like, who? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who, who helped me elevate my game when I saw them performing. I shared this before. I saw NWA perform, bro, and I was very blessed and thankful and fortunate in 1988, and I knew that if I ever wanted to be heard, I need to be like that. Second, Cypress Hill. We did a lot of shows with Cypress Hill. It was 1991. And then in 92, I did shows with Ghetto Boys. And every single one of them, I knew we had to elevate our game. So that's what I'm talking about. Did you ever see something that, like, you said, wow, I got to come with that energy. I probably didn't, homeboy. You know what? And I'm going to say the truth. I was ignorant to that because Oxnard, we didn't have access to L.A. like that, perrito. Like, I couldn't say, let me go look at it. I would only watch it on your MTV, Rad, and all yeah. You know, but I probably thought I was as good as them, and I didn't. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to break that down. But of course, I like the shows and everything. But I really, I really, I thought I was the shit when I wasn't. Okay. 
Okay. And and uh, so now you dropped your first album, 1998. When did the next one come out? Did you just keep dropping them? Just to I keep- kept dropping, homeboy, every time, every time. And they all were doing what they were doing. We were Swap Me Legends. Yeah. Right? And I never stopped rapping. My homeboy, Brown Intentions, broke up. The friendship did, and just the group did, because... He went to jail. He got a family now. Yeah. This and that. So I kept rapping and rapping and rapping and rapping. And then one time, (laughs) never stopping. He's like a cholo hit. Okay, so when you go solo, that's when you drop your solo album? Is that what you're telling us? I dropped California Cowboys. Okay, and that was solo? Me solo. What was the response that you got from that? Man, I got a legendary record, homeboy. I was rapping. I got a hold of Snoop. I got a hold of the East Siders. I got a hold of who was on that cab. Um, uh, MCA's on that Vecca. Okay, on your first record. And Be Real produced one of them tracks with me and Sin Dog. Dope. And that record... um, I put it down, but it did not go platinum or none of that. Right. Were you disappointed knowing you had heavyweight names? Yes. Like that? Okay. Because I thought, ah, homeboy, let's go. So, so now let me ask you this question because I think this is something that a lot of our viewers can really learn from. Because you got a lot of heavyweights on that your first solo album, and it didn't do what you expected, okay? And with those kind of names, it should have went through the roof, Okay. Mm-hmm. What's one thing that you learned from there? It, is there success and pain in getting these big names? I learned, well, Lean Like a Cholo was on me solo, right? Right, but I don't want to, I'm, I'm working up to that. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about this one. <laughs> All right, so yes, when the Lean Like a Cholo dropped, I figured that I did it alone, local, right? But yes, I did. I was one of the first asses that did that. Okay, no, but what I'm saying is, was there a benefit? We're talking about your first album. It's a benefit to my own. Okay, right for here, you. Right? Okay, okay. Me senti chingon, Simon. That's dope. Okay. See, but obviously it didn't, but I'm proud of it, homeboy. Okay. So that record comes out, and now I'm going to jump into your album, okay? And this is, I kind of want to go over all the songs on here. So your album. Let me go over my notes right here. Your album is the definition of an essay. Okay. Now, it says down kilo on there. Well, why did you have two names? Because I didn't know whether to refer to you as down or kilo. So well, why both names? Down, that was my first record. California Cowboys, it was only down. Okay. That's my neighborhood name. Okay. Kilo, one day I got signed to Univision, homeboy. Okay. And to do a Spanish album. And before the definition of an essay. Simon. Okay. And damn, didn't sound too right for, that's when, I don't know if you remember the group Awkward and all that when they were cracking. Yes, yes. And ese tiempo, I got signed to Univision myself and... I said, well, damn, who's down? Yeah, and I said, well, fuck, I'm Kilo. So you just freestyled that shit and said, fuck it, so Kilo. <laughs> I'm going to go with Kilo, and now I'm Kilo. Okay, okay, that'll work. So now what made you come up with the name definition of an SF for the album? For your fans, explain that. Definition of an essay. We made the record, Fingers. Shout out to Fingers, which is my top dog producer. Yeah. I work with Battle Cat. I work with all of them. And Fingers, we did the record definition of an essay. We didn't do definition of an essay thinking that was the name of the album. Oh, okay. Yeah, because track number one is definition of an essay. And, uh, and if you listen to everybody's record, and I'm going to say the truth, that is... The dictionary, como se dice, that tells you what the definition of an essay is without throwing up a hood and saying forget every other hood and all yes. that. 
It's like really like fuck, bro. It's the truth, and that I'll box to that homeboy. Yeah, and I'll challenge anybody to go and top the definition of an essay. Okay. Okay, I just I just had something here that I wanted to bring up really fast before I go into this. Uh, where is it at? Okay. So the definition of an essay. Whenever I bring up a song, because I'm gonna go through the tracks, let me know if there were some features. Okay, because I thought I had them on here, but I guess I don't know. Check in my trash to see if I deleted them, and they're not here. So give me one quick second, because I definitely want to get this right. Um, okay, let me see. I don't know where in the heck this went. Give me one quick second. Here we go, right here. Okay, bam. Bam. Okay. So now, track number one, definition of an essay featuring Diamonique. What does she do on, on um, that record, on the definition of an essay? Say it again, Logan. <laughs> definition of an essay, uh, Down, a.k.a. Kilo, featuring Diamonique. Diamonique. What does she do on this? Did she sing? She, did, she... Did, she did the hook. Okay. Okay. And, and um, let's go to track number two, since you already gave us the definition of that song or what it meant. Track number two, I'm Coming Home to You, a.k.a. Uh, Kilo featuring Nate Dog. Nate Dog, yeah. What was that experience working with Nate Dog? Man, Nate Dog, the homie, rest in peace. Yes. He came to the studio and he got down with me. Mm -hmm. And he came alone and I was there alone. We were just chilling and I looked up to him, homeboy. Yeah. And he was really down to work with the essay. And, man, it was dope, homeboy, like... He showed me that leg that 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 vato, you know, he did the dopest hooks on a gang of the all the Dr. Dre and everything right. and you know what I'm saying? It, it 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 was a pleasure working with the legend and knowing that the legends are just like us, homeboy. Yeah. Cosa que, que, yeah. Que, some of those mismos, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't care how absolutely. big you are, homeboy, when we shake hands, I right. feel you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm coming home to you. What was that song about? That was about I got to hustle. I get my shit right. Like, going out and getting your money, and I'm coming home to you at the end of the night, girl. Dope. Dope. Okay. Uh, Be About It featuring Nicky Diaz. Nicky Diaz, yes. What, uh, what is that song about? Be about it. Be about it. It's be about it. Like, be about it. Like, be about it. El nombre lo dice todo, loco. Yo sé, pero lo, quiero que tú lo digas. ¿Qué <laughs> no sé? No, lo que dice el nombre, carnal. Lo que se mira no se pregunta, ¿verdad? Sí, <laughs> Okay. Okay, so now, I, I, I just have to ask you, because a lot of these names Ay, are so yeah. explanatory. Yes, Don't be jealous, featuring Nicky Diaz and Fingers. Don't be jealous, yeah. Don't be jealous. Same shit. It talks about... I'm like, hey, homeboy, you're crying about it. Here's the tissue. Right, right. <laughs> you, you know, it's it's funny that you you name it that song. Don't be jealous, because back then, when somebody would say something, it was because they were jealous. Today, we flip that word and say they're just hating. They're just jealous. Jealous and hating is the same thing. Same thing. Jealousy's a motherfucker, bro. A motherfucker, homeboy, and it hurts. It hurts yes. to be jealous. It hurts more me, oh boy, than, uh, than, than, like, if I'm jealous, fuck, me está cargando la verga. Yeah, yeah. And the do you hate it on, he's laughing at you. Yeah, because he's living rent-free <laughs> exactly. in your head. I, li I live rent-free in a lot of people's heads right now, bro. Y sabes que? Me duermo a gusto, güey. I fall asleep. I, I I can't hate on you because it hurts me to hate on you, perrito. Like, oh, oh, oh. Este güey está ganando más feria que yo, o trae más viejas que yo, o lo que sea. ¿da? But you know what's a beautiful thing, bro? When you can say, keep winning, bro. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous, perrito. Like, Don't like, be why, jealous. Why are you mad at? Yeah, why are you mad at? You know, you're, you're running on a treadmill, homeboy. You're running on a treadmill going nowhere fast. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, I'm going to skip lean like a cholo because we're going to come back to that. Cause that's track number five. All right. G's need love too, featuring Nikki Diaz. It's self-explanatory, but elaborate on G's need love too. 
So G's don't get love? No, loco. <laughs> I did it in a different way because I'm, when when a gangster rapper goes and does a do a love record, mm-hmm. and to me that's the closest I could get to a love record without being MC Magic with all due respect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I said, we need love too. Oh, we need God, love too. What's up? Gangs, gangsters need love too. I, I have to ask you this because I just learned this. Have you ever been to an MC Magic show? I've done many shows with the homie. Okay. I'm going to say this about him, bro. It, when my boy, and I'm going to give him a shout out, Big D and even Kirk, uh, Compton Kirk, when they invited me to an MC Magic show was earlier this year. Now, I cannot sit here and say I know a lot of MC Magic songs, but going well, to a show. Well, they all sound the same, so. Well, I, I, you know, but going to the show, man, it was a blessing, bro. Like, the, number one, the peace that I felt in the dressing room amongst them. Only other time that I felt that much peace when I was in the dressing room with MC Hammer. Okay? I really felt peace. Like there was no bad mouthing, nobody was talking about it, anybody. I really felt that peace. Baby Bash was there, little Rob was there. And I went up to Bash and I said, you know what, bro? I haven't felt this like in years. I haven't felt this in years. I had an opportunity to go visit uh, um, MC Hammer. I went backstage with him, chopped it up for like 15 minutes. Real peaceful. You want anything to drink? You want some fruit? You want anything to eat? Bien calmado. And going out there and watching Magic perform, it was a blessing, bro. So I was blessed by going to those shows. And, I, and that's why he continues to win. And I'm happy for that guy. Yes, bro, me too. I give it up to all of them, homeboy. Like me, I can't hate on, I can't hate on the homie and I can't yeah. hate on peace going on in the dressing room. If yeah. you ever step into my dressing room, homeboy, it's nothing but love because I will not let you bow mouth right. nobody. Why? Because why should we? And we got nothing bad to say. Right. In my dressing room, like, nobody says nothing. And the only thing we're talking about, if anything bad, is going to be what we do at off the, off the radar, off the, like, it's got nothing to do with the stage. It's got nothing to do right. with that. Well, but I feel that, you know what, I, I give them all props. Like, Lil Rob, everybody, every time I met them, Bash, everybody, every time we kick back together, we don't talk about nonsense. We talking about like, what's up, what's cracking, what you up to, food, yeah. what's your next move, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Nothing but good things. All good. So G's need love too. And then Got to Hustle uh, um, between Butch Cassidy and Flockies. Butch Cassidy. I haven't heard of Flockies in years. She, she was signed to Univision sometime, right? She was signed to Univision. Yeah, and I think she had a cameo in that one movie. ¿Cómo se llama? The one with the police. Sí, that one. Simón, ¿cómo se llama? También me agarraste ese nombre. Esa pinche película me cayó gorda, bro. I, like, I never watched the whole thing. Yeah, that's why. I, I was just like, oh, God. But uh, Got to Hustle, what is that about? Self-explanatory, mm-hmm. but what are you saying? Mm-hmm. Got to do, yeah. Bush Cassidy, I mean, that's the homie. I haven't talked to him for a second, but Got to Hustle is basically just got to hustle, homeboy, like, Man, nowadays, every goddamn record, homeboy, they're made basically all about the same shit. Yeah. Life. And we say the same shit on every record is say, except say it different. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, gotta hustle. Yeah. I can't really like put a stamp to every single record because they're all about the same thing. Gotta hustle. Isn't that what all rappers talk about? Gotta hustle. I'm the best and I am the shit and I got the most bitches and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right? So. But do they? Or probably do and probably don't. I don't know what to tell you. Cada quien. Cada quien. You, you know, I had Sugar Free here not too long ago and he said, Motherfucker got the same amount of days as, same amount of days and same, same amount of hours as Michael Jackson, but still chose to be nobody. Fuck that dude. I'm the sugar free, my boy. I've got records with them, and tampoco no le entiendo ni lo que me dice a mí tampoco, loco. Yeah, but, I don't understand but, it, so I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, what I understood by that, you got to hustle, you got the same amount of days that he did. 
Right. You got the same amount of hours that he did, but he chose to do what he did and you chose to do nothing with what you had. And there's a lot of people that want the elevator to success, but sometimes you have to take the stairs. Sometimes you got to take the stairs. But people want the elevator to success. Sometimes you have to take, you know, what you got, what you got with lean like a cholo. Did uh, that happen overnight? Fuck, no. God you took man. the stairs. I took it to, like, man. Yes, homeboy. And that's why when you get to that level and you get to the top, it feels like you deserve this so you don't even, like, you don't even take advantage of it because it feels like, or right, when Lean Like Cholo hit, homeboy, you know what? I didn't feel any greater than when I didn't have Lean Like Cholo. Okay. Well, and let me get to that. Save me that. Save me that because I got a couple of more songs. Okay. The G Way with featuring Snoop Miss Doggy Dog. Snoop Doggy Doggy. We're back now with the Jack Off <laughs> Hour. Man, right. Snoop. Uh, me and Snoop work, and Snoop did that before Lean Like a Cholo. Mm-hmm. But that was about some paper. Okay. Okay, so now, Everlasting Nights featuring The Day. Am I correcting it? Am I saying it right? The Day and Tanya Gomez. Simon from New Mexico. Okay. They Everlasting Nights. What is that about? Everlasting Nights. You remember that from Ronnie Owen, Joe Cooley? Right, but, but Everlasting Bass, right? Right. So we did Everlasting Nights. By the way, they sued me for that, huh, boy? No shit? Yes. ¿Y pagates? It's not where we're going. Fucking <laughs> definition of an essay, the album is going platinum. I didn't pay it. Or actually, I did. But I was sent to Universal. And Universal les dio una feria, pero a quien se la quitaron al pinche cheque del kilo. Yeah, it was recoupable. <laughs> it was recoupable, motherfucker. Motherfuckers need to learn recoupable. Exactly. Okay. So now, okay. Uh, you ain't getting nothing featuring fingers. You ain't getting nothing. Who's not getting nothing? It's basically in my, you ain't getting nothing, homegirl. Got your mind on my money. Hey, I'm to get your mind. Got your mind on my money, and my money on your mind. So she's not getting no vergasos or feria? She or vergasos. <laughs> she ain't getting nothing. Okay, okay. Los vergasos, sí, esos, pues esos vienen gratis. Esos vienen gratis. No, pero a veces costa. <laughs> it costs you something. Okay, Just Like You featuring B-Roll. That must have been fun. B-Roll produced that record. And b Will raps on it, and he did the hook for me, and he produced the beat. Shout out to b Will. That's one of the realest motherfuckers I work with, homeboy. Yeah. Yeah, man, because when I, I, fuck, I grew up listening to that homeboy, and I never imagined this thing, that I'd be sitting with B. Yeah. And I'd smoking a leño, <laughs> kicking back, and that's one of the realest records right there. That's one of my favorite records, homeboy. Okay. Okay, so now, here you have, just to name some songs, because that was track 11, Be Real, okay, Snoop Dogg, okay, you had uh, Butch Cassidy, okay, then you had Nate Dogg, Diamonique, you had a lot of great talent on there, we don't deny that, but the song that takes off is Lean Like a Cholo, now, that record drops, Okay, the record drops. Did it take off immediately or did it get a running start and then took off? Immediately, homeboy. It dropped and then one day and a week later, I'm filling up rodeos in the Chuco town over there in El Paso, Texas. No shit. And I'm and I'm kissing Fifth, sitting with Ryan Secrets in the morning. And doing all this. Why like, Secrets in the morning? Yes. Like, why that record? When it was like my, to me, the sorriest record I had on my album, Perrito. You know what? You know what? I can respect that because you're honest. I, I, I guarantee you, you were probably thinking the B-roll song. Yeah. The Nate Dogg song. 
the Snoop song, and then other homies in the club. And then you were like, "There's no way this song." No, for real. I remember I went to the meeting. They said, "Hey, come over. Let's talk about your new release and what's your single, right?" And they said, "You ready to hear your single?" So yeah. Boom, 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 boom. But I said, "What? What about that Snoop record?" They're like, "No, this is your single." I said, no. They're like, all right, then put it out yourself. Here's your record and take off. I said, all right, well, fuck that. <laughs> put it out. No shit. Sure. But week. they knew what they were doing. The, the, the label knew what they were doing. I really don't know. Okay, so you think it was kind of like a, a shot in the dark and a hit? Because you wanted to snoop stuff. And they said, no, we're going to release Lean Like a Cholo. And you, you were against Julie, it? Julie Pilot at Kiss FM grabbed that record and said, I want this record and let's blow it up. And then in, in, in Chuco Town over there in El Paso, they took it and they blew it up in one week. And there you have it, Berrito. I don't know what to t- it was done and now that's the biggest record that uh, an essay has ever dropped up to this day okay I had Frank Nitty here like three times okay Mm -hmm. and I asked him this question then I'm gonna ask you I said what song is bigger and I said don't lie tell me the truth La Raza Kid Frost or Lean Like a Cholo and he said hands down Lean Like a Cholo that's what he said so I'm gonna ask you to you, what is bigger, La Raza or Lean Like a Cholo? The Kim Kardashian dance to La Raza, and did she dance to Lean Like a Cholo? Tu dime, tell us. My record crossed over and fucked them up. Okay. And that if Lean Like a Cholo, where it came out, what was that, like 19... 1990, when La Raza right? was dropped, yeah. That would have dropped then. I would have sold as much records as Michael Jackson, homeboy. Really? Fuck, homeboy. Come on. I'm asking. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you. I'm asking me what? World record is big, homeboy. Okay. La raza. No, or, I, I don't know. I know that the way they see it. If we're talking number-wise, obviously you. Talking number-wise. What I believe open doors, and this is where I choose, I will say La Raza. That opened open doors, yes. Yeah. I, I admit so to you, that. we admit that. And that's, that was the conversation that I had with Frank Nitti. I wasn't talking numbers. I was talking about what made it a, more of an impact. I thought La Raza did because, and I said it's for this reason only, because it was the first of its kind. Yes. That was all. And so, that was 19, 1990. 1990, yes. And then 2007, Seven. that's what, 27 years later, right? Yes. Now, now, this is an important question. 27 years later, from 1990 to Lean Like a Cholo. Okay. Yes. Two big records. Why haven't we had anything for 27 years, bro? I can't answer that question, Perrito, because it hasn't. See, and, and nobody can answer that. And they get upset with me when I challenge them. Where are those hit records in between those 27 years? So now, 2007, 2023. This Lean has. Like a Cholo, where are those hit? Do we have any of those Lean Like a Cholos and La Raza's right now? Not that I heard of. Okay. Now, it, does that sound like I'm picking on anybody? <laughs> no, you're saying the truth. Oh boy, what are we picking on somebody? Yeah, no, but I always get some flack that somebody said like, oh, this motherfucker's talking down on the culture because he said, I'm just asking a fucking question. I'm asking the same thing. Where are they at? And I don't know. Yeah. And even myself, how come I haven't landed another one from 2007 till today? Yeah. Right? right? How come he didn't do it in between those times? Now, do you have the Sunday afternoon in between all that? From Lighter Shade of Brown and all that? Yes. Hit records. But are they as big as those two records? Probably not, but I will say this respectfully, that Lighter Shade of Brown is a part of history. They made yes, history. Yes, but we're not talking about... Uh, of course, yeah, we're, we're talking, talking about numbers. About like, we're talking <laughs> about yeah, numbers. Like the biggest record. Right. And, and, and that's cool, bro, because... Look at Loco. They did what they did, and those records right there are 
I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in the encyclopedia, homeboy, for the word Cholo. Really? Wow. Look up the word Cholo, and it says, also this homeboy made the lead like a Cholo and a part of it. Okay. And I ain't the definition of, I ain't, I ain't the definition of a Cholo homeboy. I'm a Cholo, cool. But. Hey, they, they gave that to you. You know, they wrote it. I did. They wrote it. Okay. And that's one thing that I want to be because you had groups como again, respectfully, I say this Spanish fly. So 18 with the bullet. Then you had lighter shade of Brown who had multiple hits, at least in my opinion, uh, um, from Latin active to Sunday afternoon from, you know, I like El Barrio, TJ nights. I can name a lot of their right, songs. Yes, okay. Um, then you had proper those. They had Mexican power. They had hard times, classic album. Um, then you had Brown side that came out, I believe 1996 or 97. And then towards the end, you started having like a lot of, um, even though they were there from the very beginning, but as far as your solo projects, slow pain, rest in peace, Nino Brown, AOT, you had a lot of dope, you know, rappers. Okay. Then comes the two thousands. Okay. I believe that, uh, if we're going to talk a little bit about Chicano rap, that, uh, the golden era of Chicano rap was the nineties. My opinion. Okay. Uh, do you consider yourself a Chicano rapper? Do you consider Lean Like a Cholo a Chicano rap song? <laughs> what do I look like, homeboy? Tomás, estoy preguntando. Yes, I'm a Chicano rapper. Okay. And if you want to call me Chicano rap, I'll take the flag. Dope. Okay. Well, uh, yes, I'll take, the, I'll, I'll take the flag. I'll carry the flag for Chicano rap. And yes, Lean Like a Cholo is Ch like a cholo because what am I going to say I'm not going to say to me that I'm just hip hop and this and that alright I'm hip hop to the fullest absolutely because those are your roots yes but yes okay here's how I knew that your song was different from La Raza now I'm going to talk about different I like different I'm going to tell you why it was my daughter's 17th birthday and she asked me dad I want you to DJ because I've been DJing for years okay so we threw a party back here for her but all her high school friends, she, she didn't go to high school here in my city. She went to high school in San Pedro. And she went, like, to a private school. All her friends were predominantly white. You know, some were black. A few Chicanas. But they all came. 16, 17-year-olds. The number one song that they requested. Lean Like a Cholo. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. When I played that, and I was mixing on my CDJ turntables, my pioneers. And I pressed play. All... The white girls went absolutely <laughs> crazy. Okay. Yes. Now, I remember Violet Brown. Do you know Violet Brown? Violet Brown, you used to work those CDs over there. At After the, the warehouse. Warehouse, yes, sir. Okay, I've been knowing Violet Brown since I've been a teenager. Yeah. A good friend of mine. She's actually been here on this platform. Violet Brown called me up one day. She goes, there's a guy coming out with a song called Lean Like a Cholo. And she starts laughing and she says this. Do you know who's in that video Leaning like a cholo, and I said, "Who, Violet? Jerry Heller." Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my whole. That was, that's my whole point. Yeah, Jerry Rest was my manager peace. for like two years. Rest he in was peace. my manager for two years before he passed away, too, homeboy. Yeah, yeah. So I saw him on, and I was like, "There's no way." And then you know how I saw dancing in the video, and they like was like, "Oh way, no way." So I called them just to tease them. Daz, Daz was in there. Yeah, Daz, Daz been down with me. Yeah. So I saw yes. him on there. But you had a lot of people in that video. Lupio Rivera was Lupio on there. Lupio Rivera. Okay, go, go through some more. Lupio, fucking Chino XL was in there. Oh, yeah. Um, fuck, I don't remember. Okay, you had Dion Monique. I thought I saw a cameo in there over. Monique was uh, Daz, in there. Uh, uh, Jerry Heller, we mentioned. Anybody else worth noting? Worth knowing everybody. Okay. <laughs> Frank Nitty. Frank Nitty, you're right. Frank Nitty. And la mera neta, ahorita no me acuerdo. Now, now let me ask you this. What is one thing from that experience, from that shit taking off and you touring and performing all these shows, what is the one thing you learned? Possibly when that song started dying down, maybe the show started slowing down, and it wasn't as fresh as it was when it first took off. Right. Uh, let me give you my answer first before you... You give me yours. I started noticing friends disappear when everything started slowing down. I remember my mom always telling me, no, I amigos. There are no friends. 
But when I was, I had money, I had friends everywhere. You know, when I was down to my last couple of G's, little by little, you know, your, your circle becomes back small again, like when you first started. Did you ever experience anything like that? The truth, no. Okay. Because I looked at my friends always, my friends. Uh-huh. My fans were my fans, and my friends are my friends. And promoters and all that, they die out because they no longer need me at their shows because I already ripped every stage up. Yeah. You know, so I understand that. But as far as friends dying, friends, friends, like my friends, you yeah. know, okay. I never witnessed that. But I witnessed it slowed down, but I don't live off of that. Right, right, right. Okay. And that's a, that's a great point uh, uh, because you kept your business going. Right, I get yes. that. Okay. Now, can you imagine how it must be for somebody who doesn't, who lives off a of rap? Oh, pobrecitos, loco. <laughs> they yeah. sell the gold chain and they sell it. Oh, their, they go pun it. Their, their grill and everything gets sold, homeboy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, that's, but that's their, that's their pedo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Me, I, I didn't witness that, homeboy, because I'm still good. Okay. And, Lean like a cello still hasn't died. Yeah. Okay. Still, I see it on TikTok but, every time I go through it. We're gonna get to that now. Where, where were you, did you ever perform? Where you figured to yourself, I didn't think I would ever be here. Let me t- let me tell you why I asked that question. I had Ross here one time, and I asked him, and this was when he did my documentary. Where, where was the place that you performed that you thought? I would never be here. And he said, I performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. I thought that was legendary. Okay. Is there any place like that or a big stage or like you mentioned Ryan Seacrest. So that's already big enough as it is. But was there anywhere that you could say I performed here, maybe in Times Square or performed next to LO Cool J? I, I opened the Premios Lo Nuestro in Univision on the red carpet, Perrito. And I'm sitting in the back of a limousine smoking the joint with, with, with Mark Anthony home on the way <laughs> to go practice, to go rehearse. Because, you know, when you're doing the shows, you got to be there like two weeks on work because they're live. So they, they there's no, everywhere you Every step you take, a camera follows you, and there's like 20 cameras. So they they do this, like, que no, que no la cagues. Yeah. And when I'm sitting there, I'm like, really, I'm not here for real. And then when the lights went on on the main day, I said, fuck. Y mi jefita's over there in Oxnard watching me on Univision. And I think that that was, like, super big on my TV. And I'm not only, like, performing. I'm handing an award to Daddy Yankee. And he tells me, what's up, Kilo, as he's walking to the stage to go get his little award and everything. And I'm like, fuck this shit for real. Um, but then I just see you three weeks ago over there at the, at the, at the, right here in the Universal Studios at the amphitheater. And... I didn't have lean like a cholo or nothing. He was just like, what's up, Kilo? Because he was always down with me. For whatever reason. A lo mejor era porque era buena gente el vato. Sí. So then I'm like, what the fuck, for real? This motherfucker over here. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. You know, today, somebody in the comment section, and I was sharing with you earlier, somebody said, doesn't this guy only have two songs? And I'll show it to you if he didn't delete it. And I went on, the, on there and I replied. Some rappers don't even have one. <laughs> that, don't even have one. So instead of us being jealous or angry or hating on somebody, why don't we just congratulate someone on their success? Okay. So now, at what point in your life, because that came out in 2007, at what point in your life did you decide to take a break? Because you pretty much disappeared from the, the rap game. And how long were you gone for? Probably for like about, I say a good seven to eight years. Okay. And was there a reason for that? Was it just to take care of business? You know, your, your personal business? Or was it just like, I don't want anything to do with this music business? Like, what, what was the reason for that? If there was. 
There wasn't a reason for it. It was more like... It just happened, and my son, Bam Bam, left on vacation, right? For many years, and I stayed home alone. I lost my family. I lost my girl, my kid. Didn't lose my kid, not like that, but cosa me no? Yeah. And then I had a bunch of like, like, damn, I'm, I'm all right. I don't want, what else do I do? And I didn't disappear rapping, bro, because I was still recording records. Okay. But I wasn't putting them out because I thought I thought what do I do when Lee like a Cholo went through and I tried to replace Lee like a Cholo replace and it didn't happen. But to be honest with you, no, there's no major reason because I was still working and I was still, I was happy, homeboy. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that, fuck, loco, you caught me on a good one, homeboy. Like, I don't Take know what time. to tell you, homeboy. There was no special reason except that I didn't probably care if, I didn't care. Do, do you think you might have gotten burnt out of the industry? Like uh, burnt out, like, ya estabas enfadado. Me enfadé porque, como tú dices, the show stopped, everything stopped, and I guess you were offering me <laughs> crumbs to go perform, bro. Oh, Not I see what you're going to do it on me. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all right. Right, okay. Okay. And maybe that's what you just said. Like, you para on the shows, para otro, entonces yo que más hago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay. I watched everything and... But you were always, always uh, uh, still recording. I was still recording, yes. I was still recording with fingers and everything. We're dropping records, dropping records. Pero se acabó with when the labels... It was a real different thing when... when to become famous now it's got to be YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all TikTok. that. And I was a little bit too homeboy. Yeah. Like, like no sabía que hacer con todo. Yo todavía creía. Oh yeah, you're, you saw three, you, you got three million plays on YouTube, but you're still not a real artist to me. Pues yo pendejo pues. Like, yeah, yeah, like exactly. I thought you had to be on TV and on the radio 24-7, but now it's like, Dude, you don't even got to be on the radio and on TV no more. Because that is TV and that's the radio. It is. But it I is. didn't know that. Yeah. Till now I come back and I'm like, oh, man, this is even easier than I thought. And look, I'm back here and I started making noise doing that. And that's what's up, homeboy. Like, like I... I don't have an answer for that, homeboy. It just okay. decides, okay. like, that's what happened. So so now, 2023, at what point in time did you decide to, like, okay, I'm going to start, and I don't want to call it a comeback, but, like, I'm going to start releasing stuff again, okay? Uh, uh, was it this year? Was it, was it late last year? When did this start for you to, to start? I'm going to start podcasting, start showing my face a little bit more. It was earlier at, towards the end of last year when... Cuando salieron todos los raperos de México. Oh, okay. And then I said, God damn, these vatos are selling out stadiums like Santa Fe Clan y todos esos vatos. Eh? Yeah. And I said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to drop a Spanish record. So I went back and I called Fingers up and I said, Fingers, I want to get in the studio and I want to do this. And he's like, well, come on, let's go. And then I went back to try to like capitalize on that. And obviously, it got my motivation back up. Obviously, it didn't work as good as I thought it was, but it did move me back to, like, coming back and start saying, all right, then go back and drop records. And then I hired people to come and work for me, to, for my team, Mi Feria Music. I started my own label, and I did my own thing. And then I saw the game, like, okay, I'm a septic still. And everybody, like, 
like, you know, like a Tony A calls me and does these podcasts and this thing right here, bro, this is where it's at. You know what I mean? Places like this that bring me back and now I see it and now all of a sudden, now everybody calling me, how much you charge for a show? How much this and that? How much you charge for a feature? How much? So, orale, that's all I had to do. Yeah. But I think it was because, I think it, it, God gave me that to like, o sea que te desenfades, ¿sí me entiendes? Like, yeah, yeah. Now nah, he was tired of me for a second when I'm back. And now they like, they captured it back and, and they show me love, homeboy, to everybody out there. And thanks to them, like, they're like, all right, I'm still that dude. Yeah, okay, okay. So now let's talk, let's bring everybody up to date. 2023, uh, we got about two more months left. You plan to drop anything soon? Anything new? Yes, we're dropping. I just went back. I just, this this Saturday that just passed, uh, I redid the video to Lean Like Cholo. We did the remix. Okay. To Lean Like Cholo, and I did the, and I did the vi new video to Lean Like Cholo. Okay. So I'm dropping that. I dropped the back of um, my little Haina, and little Chicago, and of course, like, I dropped those, and my, my 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 best thing is to like remind them right now that I'm still alive and I'm dropping records, right. back on track. You right. know what I'm saying? But what happened was that that new record, Lean Like a Cholo, is still the same flow, same everything. But you know, I just dropped it because. Fuck, I just dropped a perrito. Okay. That's my new stuff that I'm going to drop. When is that dropping? That's dropping this month. Okay. Video and everything. Video and everything, homeboy. Okay. And I'm hoping that they come and listen to that or hear that again because the new little kids, remember this, that record right now, it's like born again to all these little kids that are seven, ten years old, they never heard that. Right, right, right. So, you're, so you're, stop pegando otra vez, gacho. Yeah, you, you bring it to another generation. Yes, and at the same time, now that they thought, like you said, doesn't he only have one or two records? Yeah. I want to show him, look, now it's my time to send it, I'm going to show you more records. Do you believe, and I'm sure, I'm sure you, uh, see, I can answer this for you, pero más te quiero preguntar. Do you believe that Kilo has another or a few more hits in him that can possibly top Lean Like a Cholo? <laughs> and homeboy, if I do, I'll become... If it does, Perrito, like, God damn, homeboy, I, I wish and I pray to God that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say I do? I don't know. Only the crowd could decide that. Yeah. But do I believe so in my in my heart? Yes, I have a lot of them. But probably songs that I did 15, 20 years ago before Lean Like a Cholo. Right. When you did Lean Like a Cholo, I know you kind of pre answered it, but for the people that are barely tuning in, I need to ask this question in this manner. When you first did Lean Like a Cholo, did you know that it was going to do what it, was, what it did? Never. Okay. reason why I ask that is because so many people like to play a song that this is going to be a hit. I, I'm sure you've heard that, and I've heard that for years. The, the people are the ones that tell us if it's a hit or not. It's, yes. It's them. I've okay. known that. Okay, so now, so you're going to drop this song this month. Now, tell us a little bit about the video shoot because there's been a, there was a lot of people there, and then there was rumors flying around almost immediately. Anything you want you care to clarify on that? What are you talking about? No, I guess the, the video shoot. <laughs> the video shoot was dope. Oh, so who who filmed it? Jokes and myself. Oh, okay. The mother estoy preguntando. I'm just asking because you know the 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 rumors are floating it, I around. Got, I got, yes, the rumor. Look at this. Somebody text me. Let one go. They told me, call me. I know what you're getting now, homeboy, and I'm going to do it. 
Okay. It's, it's up to you, bro, if you want to talk about it. If not, we'll no, switch no, it up. No, 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 no. I'm going to talk about it because they're trying to mum me up. Okay. All right. A ver. They said that my set was the most unprofessional set. Uh-huh. She's ever been on. And they thrashing your name bad. And that you and her never even got along and you never paid her for anything. And she said, she's going live right now, it's work going live. Mm-hmm. That I try to strangle her in the alley. You that you did? <laughs> Listen. On Vavili, that I tried. How come I didn't do it? I just tried, right? Fucking lie. I would never do that to a woman, I'm, and I'm against that, homeboy. There, they live, or she lives. Of a drama. Quiere que la estén mirando. Because she can't sing, she can't rap, she can't do nothing no more. Besides come out in a bikini and doing a thing. When I was in the dressing room, after that happened, she told me, damn kilo, this is going to go viral. I'm going to put it up and this and that. Like, this is the best thing that ever happened to the homegirl. Right? And I said, all right. She said, I'm going to call the police. I said, no, girl, like, don't do that. So now she a snitch. She a liar. You're trying to live off of something that I don't entertain that drama, homeboy. I don't. And I'm not down with snitches, and I'm not down with none of that. And now she says that she's going to call police. I mean, for what? What did I do? There was people there. Obviously, nobody or vouch, nobody saw that. Nobody, uh, that didn't happen. So La Ruca está ahorita live diciendo sus chingaderas que las diga. ¿Sí me entiendes? But I don't entertain that, homeboy. And respect to all girls out there. And if she want to live off of that, homeboy, my name's clear, homeboy. Don't mount me up. Go and f- I really, I really. What would, why would that benefit me for her to say I set her up? What would that benefit me for me to set her up? What? What do I get out of it? So now, nah, bro, I clear my name and I tell everybody, no. I had nothing to do with whatever she did to get in that mess. And that's all I can say. All good. All good. So, back to the music video. Uh, drops this month. Okay. I'm assuming uh, late, late this month. Okay. And um, can we expect a record, or like an album EP at the beginning of the year? Like, what, what can Kilo fans expect coming 2024 since we're pretty much at the tail end of this year oh man i want to drop something Tony. but <laughs> el pinche pedo está que, que nowadays like how do you drop an album when you don't got a hit record to follow the album or to carry the album because nowadays it's either drop a single i'm gonna drop a single at a time okay okay and I'm going to keep them coming. Because if I put an album out, I just wasted, what is it, 10, 12, 13, 14 records. Right. Okay, so, so you're going to do the single, single. Single, single. single. Okay. And yes, I want to drop an album, but ahorita ya en estos tiempos mejor, let me drop a song at a time and let them grab it. And right. Okay. Now, as far as this uh, Lean Like a Cholo, who produced this? 
with the fingers as well? Fingers did the whole album. Everything I do is with fingers. Battle Cat did like two. And then I'm trying to get to Daz, but he's always busy. I want to at least one. I want to do 18 with the bullet. C- call him, call him. He's watching right now. You know, no, no, he's watching. Not, not said, Dile, the Daz, I need you. I need a track. No, he already knows. I just talked to Daz <laughs> a few days ago. And Daz, Daz already know. I want 18 with the bullet. Okay. I told him, give me 18 with the bullet and let me rap the, almost the same lyrics and then we flip it a little bit. That'll work. That'll and work, I just want to do it because I love that record. I grew up to it. Yeah, that'll work, man. So you're going to start performing again? I've been performing and I'm doing, man, I've been doing, I've been, you know, I've been doing more like, 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 um, I want to say, say like, like for the people, like I'm doing a, a, a toy giveaway and okay. I'm not charging for stuff like that, but I'd rather do those than you call me and try to offer me $500 to go perform, bro, instead of telling me, you know, what, come get down for the kids and come do this. Right. And yes, I'm, 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 I want to show. So anybody want to see me in the town, yes, I'll come and do well, it. How can they reach you? Instagram? Do they reach you personally? Instagram, you down a- AKA Kilo. And same thing, down AKA Kilo, Instagram or Facebook, um, TikTok, everywhere. Down AKA Kilo. How, how do you like TikTok? How do I, I, I have, do I have a friend that runs mine. And I, I, I tried to. Maybe I'm just old, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. Maybe you're just older. You are. No, maybe. But well, I know <laughs> I am by age. You uh, I, thank you. You know, but maybe by age, but te estoy diciendo maybe la mentalidad. You know, maybe. And I, it's not the mentality. You're like me. I have more things, better things to worry about than to sit there on TikTok. I have to go <laughs> and work and bring the money and. and and maybe I should worry about it because that brings my money, but I have somebody that works mine too. So when they email me or when they see me, they're like, dude, you didn't reply to my comment or to my then Dude, I never decide. Tú crees que yo tengo tiempo de... Y leen la que cholo tiene un pinche chingo de mensajes. How you been? Where you at? I remember you. Didn't you see me at the liquor store the other day? Motherfucker, I'm at the liquor store every day. Right, right. <laughs> um, you, you know, let me ask you: Do you still get a lot of people that recognize you? I get a lot of people that recognize me, but not as much as they should because Lean Like a Cholo is bigger than Kilo. And, and I'm glad you said that because somebody asked me why would you why would he want his name uh, of the song on the flyer? Because remember, you, you we had talked about that. that, and I truly respected when you said that. You said that name, Lean Like a Cholo, is bigger than Kilo or Down. Timon. And it's true. No, but and you know what? And you know how to play the business. It's true. You know? And they're big, big. It ain't bigger than Down AK, bigger than my face. They don't know who did that record. Mm. And that's. Oh, real. by the way, where did they film that at? What? The, the Lean Like a Cholo video. The, 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 the old one. The first 2007. One. The, right here in Hollywood on a, on a studio on a green screen. Okay. And did you give Daz dancing lessons for that video? <laughs> I don't think he needs them, but like, my, um, no. What about Jerry Heller? Jerry Heller, Jerry Heller, Jerry Heller, Jerry Heller. No, but I think right there and then. He did a good he, job, though. He got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just put yeah. your elbows up. Okay, now, last question I need to ask you because there was a time when that song was popping and obviously you had your fan base, but there was also some negativity attached to that song. And I'm sure you probably heard of it. Some people thought that you were making fun or exploiting the Chicano culture by making a song like a spoof about Cholo's dancing, like almost like if it was a joke, how would you answer those people? If they asked you, Hey man, I think you're making fun of our culture. I think you're making Cholos look bad. I think you're trying to make a joke out of us. How, how would you answer that question? Because that was actually one of the main questions that people were DMing me, asking this, asking this. I never heard him answer it, or nobody's ever asked him that. So, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard of that, correct? Never. Okay, then it's obviously, then I caught you off guard. I, man, if that would have been making fun of the Rasa, you think I would have so many OGs? Waiting like Cholos right now, homeboy. 
Oh, okay, well, that record, but that, that, was, that, that was a question. They loved it. Okay. They said, wow, that's how come it became really big. And I never had nobody diss me over at Homeboy or okay. nothing because Lean Like a Cholo. Lean Like a, listen, Homeboy, Lean Like a Cholo came out in 2007, right? Yeah. There was a record called Shoulder Lean. Shoulder Lean. Yeah. Remember that? And they asked me, they told me, one of the homies that was with me at the time said, why don't you do the, and it's a tempo where they were doing the parodies a lot. Oh, I see what you're saying. And they're yeah, like, why yeah. don't you do the Cholo Lean and this and that, right? And I said, nah, I don't like, I don't like doing people's records. The next day I went to the studio and I told Fingers, Fingers, you know that Cholo, the, 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 the Cholo right. Lean? He's like, oh, well, that's swag. And I know he's going to get mad. He always tells me. That, that I say the wrong story, but I know I don't. And we fight about it all the time. And ho- homie-wise, all right? Right, right. So I said, he's like, ah, that sounds pretty stupid. I was at the studio the next day when I heard it the day before. So then he's like, nah. And then me and Fingers, like, I never write before I go to the studio. I don't have a notebook but with, with lyrics in it, and I don't do that. So he's like, nah, that's stupid. So I said, all right, Fingers, um, you think of something then. So I went upstairs to the green room and I sparked me up a lanyo and I kicked back and then he calls me. He's like, hey, damn. I was like, what's up? Because he closed the door yeah, yeah. to the studio and then I came down. He's like, look, you got to hear Vaca and all I heard, elbows up. So I sighed, elbows up. Right? And then I said, all right, it's whack." You said that's whack. Yes. Okay. So then he's like, well, you wanted that record, right? I just changed it. It ain't the Cholo lean. It's lean like a Cholo. And then I said, all right, let's do this. And all up in the club, 10 deep, looking for some hands. We in the creep. Fucking shit. All right. Still whack. The whack is ABC rap I did. And that's what that happened without making... I would never make fun of my race, homeboy. I would never do that. Okay. So that's what happened to that record, and now it's one of the biggest records. Now, now, let's look at possibly what that taught you, because by your own admission, you said that shit was fucking whack. Then you looked up all the other songs that you looked up to, you know, on your album... Does that t- t- teach us something that maybe something that simple can take off over something that we think might be hard? Because it proved it to you in your case. Something that you thought by your own admission, this shit is whack, and it fucking went through the fucking roof. Is it possibly that's what the label was looking for? What can we put in the club? What can we put on the radio? All these other songs with Be Real, Nate Dogg, and you know, Snoop, they're all good. But this one right here, I think we can sell. And the song was so simple. Dre taught me this years ago, and he said, simple sells. Yeah. And you um, kept it simple. And I, I didn't keep it. It came out simple. Okay, well. There's <laughs> two difference. I, I didn't say, let's do the most ABC rap in the wheel fingers, and it's going to hit. Yeah. Okay. It's hard. It's hard, homeboy, because, yes, uh, it's simple, but the catchiness is like, do you know? Do you know who did the Macarena song? Wasn't it some dude, some people from... Do you know... Como se llaman? No, no, I don't. I don't. Do you know who did, who let the dogs out? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, it's the way you saw me. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I found out that it was about ugly women. I thought that well, who wait, let the dogs so, out... Oh, wow. <laughs> I just found that out, that it was about ugly women. Who let the dogs out? La perras. Yeah, I thought it was about, you know, letting the dog out of you or something like that. <laughs> That's what I thought. I still, I still thought that till this day, till you told me right now. No, no, it's like, who let the fails out? Anyways, uh, <laughs> who let the Miss Pac-Mans out? But anyways, uh, there, there, there was a song, I mean, uh, somebody commented, and I'm just looking it up really quick. Uh, um, somebody said, okay, um, okay, where is it at? Okay, somebody said... Please ask him about his time with Familia Records. Familia Records, that's where I started at. Okay. 
and Familia Records was Murray Brumfield. Okay. Un, 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 un grito. He was a he was a, 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 a counselor at a high school, and his first group was Das Spanish Fly. I had Murray here. He gave me a story. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Man, Tim. Okay. Uh, how long were you there for? I'm looking for somebody's name, so please excuse me. I was there through the whole Brown and Tanches. Okay. So would you say two, three, four albums? Uh, probably more than that, Perrito. Probably. I was producing homeboys from my neighborhood, like the East Side Click, Most Wanted, my okay. cousin Screamer in them. And I was doing work over there. So if you say Brown and Tanches, probably like four or five albums. Eastside Click, probably like three, four. So through me, probably like 10, 12 albums. Okay. Damn. 10, 12 albums right there? Wow. That's Chicano rap. 10, 12 albums, and then, you know, uh, the definition of an essay. So the reason why it's important to bring that out so people can see you took the stairs to success. Yes. Okay. Now, somebody says this. And then I have something to interject. Ask him about fighting Flossy. Me fighting Flossy. Okay, before you answer that, if there's an answer, I saw an interview where, I, I, I've never met this man, but I saw an interview, somebody said, check this guy out. So I'm watching him, and he literally said on this podcast that it was his idea for coming up with Lean Like a Cholo, that he gave that idea to you, and that he actually even danced. And from there, that's where you got the idea from. You believe that, homeboy? No, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just asking you. Come on, no, Well, that's, look, I'm just telling you what he said. No. El otro los años. Is that, is that fair enough? I heard it, and I remember he said it on his own yeah. show. So he said that he came up with it? He said, I heard it. And I remember, Fingers called me, and check this out. He sent me a little thing, and he called me on a good buzz, and I called him, homeboy, to that number. He's like, I said, how do I get a hold of him and go live at the same time he's saying this? Well, I didn't get through. But now, nah, homeboy, come on. That white boy going to teach me how to lean like a cholo on me. No, th that's why I thought. Yes, he got his ass up. I fucking made him fly from one side of my, uh, my trailer when I'm shooting a video. And he said something I didn't like. And he uh, fucked that motherfucker up. Wow. All right. So, yeah, because that's what he said. And I was tripping. I was like, who is this guy? I didn't know. You know, I, don't, I didn't know this guy. And then one day I had Frank Nitti here, El Logo El Yamon. He called in. Uh, we took some phone calls. And uh, we were just talking. He was mostly talking to, to Frank. But uh, Frank, I will say this about Frank Nitti, always gave it up to you. Always gave it up to you. And, but I just wanted to ask you about him making it up. Because when he was like, oh, yeah, I was dancing like this. And I told him, yeah, just dance. When he was like, oh, yeah, I was dancing like this. And I told him, yeah, just dance like this and rap about it. I was like, nobody does that. I mean, but so that's why I had to ask. <laughs> okay. So you're saying que no. All right. Kilo, anything that I didn't ask you? Anything you want to promote, anything that you want to bring up right now is the time before we give our shout outs. I'm going to close it up like this. Yes, sir. This is really busy right now and it's bugging me that they're saying that. I just want to tell homegirl over there not to dirty my name up because she's dirtying herself up. And I don't believe I don't believe I'm snitching. And I don't believe in none of that. And that's why she got thrown off my set. Because she says I'm a snitch and I ain't done with it. So she's a snitch. Okay. At this point, any shout outs? Shout out to everybody, man. Everybody that supports Lane Like a Cholo, myself, down AKA Kilo. And man, bro, I'm happy with everybody that everywhere I show up to, they respect me and they show me love and other little kids to the OGs, to the homegirls. To the mothers, to like the man, bro. Then I wouldn't be nothing without you guys. And I'm saying, and I'm saying this, homeboy, from the bottom of my heart. I thank everybody out there that supports the homie. And I got mad love for every homeboy out there trying to put in work. Chicanos, essays, and you know what? One thing, man. Let's stop hating on each other. And everybody dope out there. Don't forget, man. We 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 all want to be the biggest, and don't. And don't put the little man down because one day he'll probably be bigger than you. 
Hey, that, yeah, that's real right there. Okay, let me give a couple of shout outs. Once again, I'm going to thank everybody uh, from my team, Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. If you need a car that be, needs to be fixed, he can fix it. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, to my son, B. Scanless, to the Hip Hop Jedi, to uh, News of Norby's, to my boy, Marvelous Inc., and also to our moderator, Magic Girl. Uh, anything you want to share, Alex? You're good? Okay, I want to thank everybody once again on the live chat, everybody who commented, everybody who, who liked, shared, everybody who disliked. It doesn't matter that you guys still watched. Um, and I also want to thank you for giving me the honor and the pleasure to, get, you know, to interview you. You know, hopefully everything takes off for you, man. Yes, man. One shout out only to my kids, to uh, Lil Jules, Bam Bam, Lil Lucky, and one homegirl that advised me real good, man. Kill Rosa, what's up? All good. And also, uh, I'll be back Sunday with another guest. But November 17th, once again, go link on my bio. I'll, I'll be posted on my community. Uh, and uh, get your tickets. Once again, Yellow already confirmed he's going to be there. It's going to be a meet and greet. Me, Hi C are going to be there. It's going to be a meet and greet. DJ Battlecat's going to be there. Lonzo from the World Class Record Crew is going to be there. We're going to have a lot of people there. Make sure you guys get your tickets. Other than that, we are out of here. Thank you. Much love, respect. Buenas noches. Take us away, Alex.